Yeah. Okay. So, welcome everyone to our September 25th meeting of the Makery. And as usual in all of our meetings, we'll just quickly go over this for anyone who hasn't been to a meeting before. So every Friday at this link that you use to join at tinyurl.com slash gtmakery bj2021. And if you have not filled out the form yet, please fill it out. You can tell us what workshops you would like to see, tinyurl.com slash gtmakery survey 2021. And we also have projects in a normal semester. Um, you can watch some of our recordings to get a more detailed understanding of what some of our projects are like. So to get started with this workshop, we will be using Fusion 360 to create 3D models. So you can go ahead and go to tinyurl.com slash download fusion. And um, JJ can put that in the chat for you guys to quickly download it. And while we are learning about, so while you guys are downloading, Maggie will teach us a little bit about the fundamentals of 3D design. Okay, hello everybody, can you guys hear me? No, I'd mute it if you can hear me. All right, thank you. Um, so, hello everybody, my name is Maggie Zhang. I am a mechanical engineering student here at Georgia Tech, and I'm not a COC member, apologies, but uh, CAD actually crosses the boundaries between COC and, oh, wow, all right, um, between the boundaries of COC and, you know, the engineering degrees, um, and you're always gonna need CAD to design physically what you're doing, so this is great for, all the startups that you guys want to make. Um, so some CAD fundamentals. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. Um, and as obviously, it's literally you're using a computer to make a 3D model. There are many different CAD programs out there. Um, and we'll be using Fusion 360 just because it's kind of like a really good intro CAD uh, program that you guys can use. And it's free to you guys. So CAD. What you're going to want to do to start before you CAD anything is you have to visualize what you want to design. And what I mean by that is like first, before any idea, before any creation, you're going to have that thought in your mind. You're going to think, okay, what this is, and then you're going to imagine it. So what's great about that is that, wow, in your mind, it can kind of manifest anything that you need. But when you're actually trying to put it into CAD, you have to start from a 2D version of whatever you're thinking and build it into a 3D version. And that's why it becomes kind of complicated and annoying. So first off, when you have your idea or design, the best way to start is to figure out the simplest way to build it. Let's say I'm going to use the picture that you guys see as an example. So you see how this is kind of like a bar. Um, it looks like there's some tabs, there's a couple places for, let's say, screw holes and such. When you're building this, like, what are you thinking of as the first piece that you're going to design? Are you going to kind of draw the shape on the wings, like one of the left or right sides, or are you going to make the bar first? And how are you going to make the bar? Are you just going to build the bar? Because to be honest, you could either just draw this kind of U-like shape, extrude out and just cut away from it or you can build the bar then build the side flap wings and then row like mirror it and such so there's a lot of different ways that you're going this and the best thing to do is start with the basic shape and start with the simplest shape that you can let's uh, try to pick one that covers the biggest side or is the most crucial piece to whatever you're trying to design because there you can add details and add flair from the center rather than trying to start on one side and kind of scan all the way through so start with basic shapes there are kind of two ways and two methods to approach catting where you cut out of a piece or where you build out of a piece. So it's like cut or extrude. So if you guys can see in the metal bar piece, um, what it looks like in that front portion is that it's kind of like a square shaped tube, right? So if you're cutting out, what you might think is, okay, I'm gonna first extrude a rectangular prism, right? 
and then I'm going to cut and basically cut a hole straight through so that it acts like a tube. That's how you cut out. Um, there's like extrude and extrude cut uh, methods within CAD, so that's really easy. Or you could build out. You can think, okay, well, I'm actually just going to make a square outline, which is kind of like one of the smaller sides. You're going to make a square outline, and it's already going to have like its inner square cut out of it. So itself is a square ring on 2D, and then you're just going to extrude it until you have the length of a rectangular prism that you want. So there are different ways to approach everything that you're designing and it's kind of up to you to find the simplest way for you to do so um after that you're gonna add your details so kind of things that are like fillets or things that kind of smooth edges um even those scroll holes that you see i would add them last because what happens when you're catting is that you have to write dimensions for everything. So you have to write, okay, this bar is X length. This hole is at this position, X length away from this side of the bar. So that means that you're going to be adding in a lot of numerical directions as such and measurements for each piece. And if you have all these small pieces, what's going to happen is if you try to move, let's say you think, okay, these wing flaps are kind of small. I kind of want them thicker. If you already have those screw holes in and then you try to enlarge it, the program is going to start yelling at you and it's going to start crying. It's like whining. It's like, oh, no, I don't like this. And that's because what's happening is that these the dimensions that you're that you have previously created are interfering with the, the new dimensions that you want. Um, so what happens is theoretically or not physically all those dimensions cannot be met if you add in a new one. So it's kind of like you want to have most of your basic shape outline and then add all those details and all those smooth edges after. Um, and that's just to minimize issues later. And then finally, it's really, really important to remember that all CAD software is bad. Um, this means to say frequently, and what I mean by that is CAD software likes to whine when it doesn't work. And then when it whines, it like overwhelms itself and then just shuts down. And then when you open back up, everything's gone. And you're like, oh no, I just spent three hours on this. And it literally just like deleted itself. It yeeted itself out of there. And so you have to save very frequently just as a good practice to make sure all of your new pieces are there as such. <clears throat> and I'll quickly interject before Megan continues. So I know some of you might be a little bit confused about what she's been saying, like extruding and cutting. So that'll be cleared up once Jay just gets into the, like, how to actually use Fusion 360, but kind of just, like, go with, like, what Maggie's explaining and then try to apply that to when Jay just starts teaching you the actual tools. Thank you, Mitt. <clears throat> okay, so a really good practice within CADing is to learn how to sketch first. Um, sketching is very important as a basis to understand the measurements of your ideas. So if we look at the pictures to your left, um, on the left you'll see these really random shapes with holes and like they're curved and they're sized very awkwardly, but there are many, many different measurements to tell you exactly how thick each piece is, what is the radius of each circle cut out, where on the piece is each kind of directional era, and from there, it makes it extremely easy for you to CAD because you already have the measurements you need. Because when you're kind of building something, you think, okay, I need a certain thickness so that it fits into this piece. You have to make sure that that thickness is correctly adapted throughout the whole piece. And so sketching helps you kind of keep in line what those measurements are. Um, and so that when you CAD in, it literally is you draw a rectangle and you type out the values for how large it is and it will set it at that dimension. 
you don't kind of want to click and drag um, and guess the dimensions because it's going to make it really, really rough to kind of standardize whatever you're making. Um, okay, so to the right, we have a picture of another sketch. This sketch is, of course, of the 3D product that you guys see in the left side of that picture. <clears throat> so <clears throat> on the bottom, you can see that it is an aerial view of this piece. <clears throat> so from there, you can see all the radiuses, radii. You can see the radii of each circle cut. You can even see the radii of those little tabs. Um, if you can tell, the tabs are actually just circles, and then they are connected to the body in a smooth fillet um, so that it is not a hard edge. Um, if you actually kind of imagine it, what we have is a collection of circles um, so that the piece itself seems really smooth, but it was truly built with circles, and that's why it seems really smooth. Um, so we have the aerial view that tells us kind of the re relations to where these holes are placed, but we also have a cutout view. You can see by the cutout view uh, that it is on its side and they cut straight down. You can tell that there is a fillet on that bottom most step. I'm going to refer to them as steps. And then you can also see the measurements for how high each step is. And you can also tell from the cutout view that the center is just bored out. There is no physical place inside the center. Um, so that's really great. You can see how simple this picture is compared to the last ones on the left, but it still tells you enough detail to create this whole piece on CAD without wondering what any other measurement is. So kind of as a practice, we talked about cutout or um, build out. How would you guys start building one of these pieces? What do you think? Like, would you start, like, how, what shape do you think you're going to start with? You can either unmute yourself or just type it in the chat, whatever you're comfortable with. My first guess is maybe a square and then start punching out the holes and then start carving out the outer shape. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's really good, because you can tell that the base, the bigger base, is a square-ish shape, so it would be really helpful to kind of map that full piece out. Um, any other ideas of where to start? And there are no wrong answers, by the way. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. I would okay. kind of do the same thing, like have a square as, like, guidelines, but I'd start with a circle in the middle and do the four little circles on the outside. Mm-hmm. Okay. That works. So you start with these circles, but you have a square kind of to feel for how big it is supposed to be within the square that's mm -hmm. centered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, are there any other ideas? I'd probably do the big circle, and then for the little holes, I might align like the edge of the edge of the hole to like the edge of the big circle. Okay, yeah, that's a really good idea. So you see that the circles are kind of like tabs that are reaching outwards rather than a full piece of its body. So you're going to draw the body as a circle first, and then you're going to add these tabs. That's a really great idea. Anything else? Okay, um, so those are all really great ideas, um, but... Let's think about it the other, another way. So you guys all looked at it and started at it from its aerial view. What if you started it from its cutout view? You could honestly, so if you're kind of thinking of it another way, right? We see that it's a 3D object and that it's circular. When it's circular, to me, that kind of means that I can also use a rotation method. This, this also might just be because you guys don't, aren't familiar with all the methods, but you can straight up rotate a shape around a certain point and kind of make it into a cylinder or a cone shape. So another way to do this is to instantly create this 3D piece where each one of these circles has their own depth dimension 
you could create that step shape based off of whatever measurements they give you there. Just create one side, right or left, whatever you choose. So you create it on one plane and you're like, okay, so here's a step, here's a little fillet. So the radius of the fillet is 1.5 units. And then I'm just gonna have that, right? And then after that, I see that the cutout radius in the center or the diameter of the cutout is 22. 22 units and therefore what I'm gonna do is from that side okay I'm gonna do the left side of this picture by the way so I'm gonna do that left side uh, steps what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rightermost edge of that left side steps and then I'm gonna count or I'm gonna create a measurement that is 11 units away from that right now we're working in 2d so it's just thinking of a 2d drawing I'm gonna work uh, 11 units away and then from that point that it's 11 units away I am just going to rotate it along that axis at that point and from there what's gonna happen is I'm gonna create this already 3d piece that is already in a shape of a circle and all of those circles are there instantly and from there, I'm going to add these little tabs with the little circles. And I, I can see that it's kind of two circles blended together, one smaller circle that it's a cutout and one bigger circle that is a fill in. And then I'm going to fill it um, from there and so that it connects to the body really smoothly. So that is one way to do it. And then we can go over the other ways that you guys chose. So you have like the square, you can definitely have the square, map your circles and then start cutting out and extruding upwards. So that's really great. Or you can just like you, um, somebody else said, start with the circle and build it upwards and then add your tabs. So those are all really great ways, um, but it's kind of up to you to figure out the easiest way to get there because if you see it one way, there's always another way to think about it. So try to go around it at different ways to see what best fits what you're making. All right, I see that we have a question. Oh, I don't know, Moody. Do I have a pointer? I think he's. Okay, um, I think that was mooted. I don't think he's necessarily. That's okay. That is. I, um, I, can, I can try yeah. to point for you, but. Yeah. It's okay. delayed back. Oh, I thought you were presenting. Sorry. Never mind then. No, you're completely fine. You're completely fine. Um, is there something that you guys want me to kind of go over that kind of glossed your mind because you didn't know what I was talking or where I was talking about? We can kind of go over it quickly again with a mouse, with Mooded's mouse. Could you go over the way you did those little four nubs at the end? Did you yes. mention that already or? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so if you're going, if you're making the nubs by having your circle base and then adding the nubs, um, if you look at the aerial view and you look at one of these nubs, you can see that it's two circles. So you have the inner smaller circle. Yep. And then you have an outer circle. Of course, that outer circle is going to overlap your central base point, um, but that is OK because you want it to kind of connect to that body. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to create a smaller circle and then build your bigger circle and then you can fill it the side so that they smoothly transition into your body circle. And so that way you kind of cut it down into other simple shapes and then you add these little details so that the shapes mend together um, if that makes sense um, and then if you're doing the cutout method obviously you're just going to draw that kind of shape and then just cut it straight through and not deal with any of that but the circle method is really great for making sure that all your measurements are correct yeah, and there's also mirror functions and pattern functions so that it's evenly spaced around the circle. Um, so if there are any questions, you guys can always type it in chat, but I think we're going to move on so that JJ can take you guys through a live demo of creating something quite useful right now. Um, and so y'all can kind of go through a hand on hand how to actually use CAD. Thank you.
JJ, you want to pull up your screen share and start walking us through these functions? You guys should be able to see the presentation at the bottom left. Um, hopefully you guys can read that on your screens while you're following along with JJ. Probably not. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Are you talking about the separate floating screen with the um, PowerPoint slide on it? Yeah. Oh, okay, I see it, yeah. Okay, so I, if you're following along, I hope you downloaded Fusion 360 by now. And so what we're going to be making is um, our, what finish? Our Novid finger. So this is what we'll be making today. And, um, but before that, actually, I'll just go through some basic um, Fusion 360 functions and then um, I'll just go over them really quickly so that um, you can just have an understanding of some of the basic tools that you can use. And then we'll be um, going through the Novid finger that I just showed. And we'll go through that all together step by step. And you'll be able to like follow along and understand better. So here we are in Fusion 360. And um, it's just basically you start with like a plane. And in order to start um, building something, of course, we start with um, a 2D sketch, as Maggie mentioned. So I click the Create Sketch button over here. And from here, I can make a 2D sketch. I can choose one of the planes. Um, I'll just choose this bottom plane. So this is the YX plane. So this is the view cube. If you click it, you can like rotate the world, basically. And if you ever get lost in like a weird place, you can click the Home button, and it'll return you to this view again. But I'm working on this top plane. so. This is my Y, this is my X. So I'll go through the first function is drawing a line in a rectangle. So um, this is the line tool. And with this, you can basically draw lines. And this is the origin. Um, so just to demonstrate, I guess, so in order to make a line, for instance, if I wanna set it over here, I can make a line, let's say three inches. So I can type in three. And if you click tab, you'll go through the next dimension that is available for that option. In this case, for the line, there's also the angle tool. So I'll just set it at 45 degrees. So now I made a line that's constrained to the origin. That's three inches long. And um, I'll also draw a rectangle. So with a rectangle, this is a two-point rectangle. So I just draw the two corners of wherever I want it. So I can type in the dimensions like I did before, um, or I can just if I know where I want to go exactly, let's say I just want to make this square right here, then I made a square with like a line um, going through the two corners. Um, and then I'll go through the other functions. So there's also a circle tool. So let's say I wanted a circle in the center. So there's also um, these little helper um, snaps. So your cursor snaps to different locations along things you've drawn, or it tries to guess like where is a good spot to be. Um, based on what you already have. So let's say I want it in the center. Um, what I can do is I can hover over this line and then find the center. And then I can just go along that line and then it'll lead me to the center. So in this case, it's extra easy because I do have a line across. But um, just for reference, you can get along an axis that you want and you'll be able to find it easier. So here, let's say I just want a circle that's, let's say, 0.5 inches in diameter. And then I can press Enter. And when you have dimension markings that get cluttered, you can also just kind of drag them out to make it easier to view. And we'll move on to the spline tool. And um, by the way, I'm going kind of fast just so you can know these things exist. And there's some more like practical ones that we'll be using more frequently, as you'll notice in the Novid finger. So um, if you ever want to cancel a line or whatever you're doing, you can press Escape, and that'll make it disappear. So a spline is kind of like a weird, um, like a weird parabolic curve kind of thing, but it like smooths along based on where you're going. Um, personally, I find it a little bit hard to use because if you notice, I'm trying to get to a different point, but then this arc is also changing as well. So um, I personally, I don't use it as much, but maybe if people are better, more of like, if they're more power users that know how this works better, then I'm sure they can make good use of this. Um, but personally, I just use CAD in a more practical manner. So if there's something I want to build, I can just um, have a good idea and try to build it. 
Um, so next we'll go into dimensioning. So um, now you mentioned constraints. So constraints is when you have, um, let's say, an object. And it's just kind of floating here. So this can you can think of this as not really be constrained to anything yet. But then um, when you dimension something, so let's say I want this um, line and the edge of the circle or the um, center of the circle to be a certain distance away, then I can constrain it with a dimension. So if I want it to be one inch away. So now this is something, so the circle is now constrained to this um, line basically. So if you ever want a specific point away from a certain um, edge or um, a center of a circle and stuff like that, then you can use the, constri the dimension tool, which is right here. JJ, could you this ask a question? Oh, He's yes. saying, how does he change to inches? He has it in, he changed his preferences, but he's still seeing the dimensions as millimeters. Oh yeah, so um, I'll, I'll go into changing that um, really quickly uh, later on when we did a Novich finger. That's the first step actually, but yeah, okay. it's in document settings. But yeah, I'll, I'll go into that as well. So um, let's see, how am I doing on time? Um, should, I, should I honestly just start drawing the thing? Because we're going to use most of these tools anyways. What do, what do you think? Uh, I think we can just go through all of them just so that everyone knows what it is. Okay. I think we're fine. Okay, okay. So next I'll go into the trim tool. So um, but later on when we work with 3D bodies, like if we want to make this 2D thing start popping out, out of the page, then we want to make sure that our lines are clean. Are clean so the, we know exactly which part we want to um, extrude. So in order to do that, we will use something called the trim tool because you see there's this weird, there's this overlap right here and that might not be good for us. So if we want to trim that, we can, uh, under modify, there's a scissors trim tool and we'll click the line and it'll leave us with the, this part missing uh, because there is another intersecting line along here. So that's the trim tool and the offset tool. If I go back to this circle, um, this is the offset tool and I can click any shape or I can even honestly I can just grab all of this or actually wait, that's not how it works. Um, I can grab multiple lines as well. Um, if it was like, like a, so I drew this, actually that was, this is drawn together, but if these are individual lines, I could grab them too. And then I can offset it by a certain position. So let's say, It'll grab whatever shape I got and then expand it um, by a dimension that I want it to. So I could put in uh, 0.5 inches and it'll, it'll get whatever lines I grabbed and then expand them. And I get the mirror tool. So this is looking a little messy. Uh, so I just, let me get rid of some stuff actually. So let's see, what should we mirror? So let's say we want to make a tree. How about that? Let's make a basic tree. Oh, that's, uh, so I'm just gonna, um, so do you see th this wasn't snapping on the axis? So I went on this point that was on the axis I wanted it and then it'll snap, it'll help me snap. So here is like half of a very, very sad tree, right? So I also don't want this line. Actually, I do want that line. I don't want. Eh, it's close enough. It'll explain the concept. So um, now, if I want to mirror this, I can uh, let's see the mirror tool. Okay, so I'll grab my objects with the mirror tool, and then I select the mirror line. So this will be the axis along I mirror. So you just need a line in order to do that. So I already have this line that's in the center of where I want to mirror it. So I click it. Oh, uh, let's see. That's interesting. Hold on. <laughs> um, let me try cleaning this up a little bit. Oh, 
let's try again. Um, it is not liking my line. Um, maybe there's a thing where if I select the mirror line already as part of it, it messes up. There we go. Okay, so you can't select your mirror line during object selection. Um, I believe I could in Inventor, but I guess maybe Fusion 360 doesn't like it or it's been a while. So, uh, but that's how you mirror something. So you press OK and you delete your mirror line. And then now I have this tree kind of thing, right? So we'll move on to 3D functions. So let's say um, this tree. So let's just make it. It's just going to be, um, I just want it to expand outwards. It won't look like an actual tree, but I just want to extrude it. So the way you do it is um, I finished my sketch earlier. So before I was in sketch mode. So this is sketch mode. So under this tab, you can see you're in sketch mode. I'm going to finish my sketch and it brings me back to this normal inspector. And then from here, I can click the extrude tool. And then from here, you can, if you want like an idea of how much you want to extrude it by, you can click grab this arrow and then you can kind of go whichever way you want it to, right? Um, if you know what dimension you're using, then you can just put 0.5 inches and that extrudes it. And if you notice, there's quite a few settings on this side. So if I wanted to go both sides and different and by different amounts, then I can extrude this side by that much and this side by that much, right? Or if I want it symmetric, it'll keep it symmetric based on one of them. And um, also, the way the way extruding works is that you can also make cuts with them. So, so this is my um, I guess finished uh, tree cookie. We'll call it a tree cookie. And I did a, I created a sketch on top of this surface. So basically. Um, when you create a sketch, I, when I started, I used one of these planes, right? I used the, the Y, X plane. But then um, if I want to sketch on a certain surface that already exists from my 3D object, then I just click it. So I want to work on this one. And let's say I want to just cut a hole in it for some reason. I don't like this tree. So um, uh, just to demonstrate, I'll just make a random hole. And I'll finish my sketch. So this hole is just literally on top of this surface and I can do extrude. And now I'm going to extrude my circle. But instead of just bringing it outwards like I did last time, you can actually cut through a solid object you already have, right? So there's also different options that you have under here. Um, so I could also join this object and it would just combine both of them basically. Um, but yeah, in this case, I just want to cut, and you can even like, cut past, and it will be okay. But yeah, so now I have a circle in my my tree thing. So that's the basic cutting. And then um, Maggie mentioned revolving earlier. So let's say um, I want to just make this like some kind of weird sphere kind of thing. So what we can do is um, in this case, instead of extruding outwards, it'll just go, it would just be coming in this direction. Instead, what I want to do is if I want to um, revolve it, I'm going to grab the, um, the sketch I have, and then I'm going to select an axis. In this case, this, this, this line will be my axis. So now I get like a weird like javelin kind of thing. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but yeah, basically, and you can specify how much of an angle you want it to go. If you want to go 360 or you want to go less. So here's like 100 degrees, right? So that's how revolution work. And the last one, pattern. Um, I just grab all of this to show it really quickly. Um, pattern, you can just make, um, you can repeat a 3D object that you made. And uh, there's also a pattern tool in 2D. Um, but yeah, this is one in 3D direction. So you again, you just choose a direction you want to have the same pattern by. So let's say I want to have this pattern going this way. Then I, I just made like a big extension of this. And it's, yes, yeah, it's, it's loading. Okay, there we go. So yeah, that's how the pattern, the pattern tool works.
And okay, those, those are basic functions. I hope you have Fusion 360 loaded up by now because we are going to be making our Novit finger. And yeah, so in Discord, I um, uploaded an image of it that we'll be using um, in order to have like a background over your sketch so that you can more accurately um, find out what you what exactly you want or to trace over it basically. So let me make a. JJ, while you're going through the Novid finger, uh, Manny's asking for you to like point out the icons when you're clicking on different tools. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks for telling me that. So if you have like a control thing on your mouse that draws a circle on your screen, you can use that. Draw the circle on my screen. Never mind. Um, oh, okay. But you can see you can see my cursor though, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I just I just be sure to hover over things better. So, okay, so I loaded up a new file and um, this is where everyone pretty much starts. And the first thing we wanna do is change our dimensions because if you notice the design is in inches and our document is in millimeters. So um, over on the left side by your browser, you have the document settings. We'll drop down arrow, the units are millimeters. So we click the um, little page with the pencil icon and then we can change our um, units over here to inches. And then when we're done, we press OK. All right, so now our entire document is in inches. So the next thing you want to do is insert our picture, which is right here. Um, I'm going to just click, I'm just going to click the picture button. So this is if you downloaded the image. If not, that's OK. You can just follow along with the dimensions that um, I figure out as I go along. So with the image, you're just going to find wherever the Novid, wherever the Novid picture was saved. And from here, um, this is going to choose which plane to put my image on. So I'm just going to use the XY plane. And if you notice, um, now my image is just resting here, right? Um, but then one thing is this, the dimensions will actually, you can scale these dimensions in order to make your picture match the document. So the way I figure it out, there might be a better way to do it. There probably is, but honestly, I just get the picture in a one-to-one -one ratio of how it originally is. And then I start a sketch. So I create a sketch um, and then I click the plane, the same plane that this picture is on. And then I just draw a line. So with the line tool under sketch. Um, and by the way, uh, please tell me if I'm going too fast and I'll be happy to slow down a little bit. So I go to my line tool. And then I just want to figure out the ratio of this dimension to the document I'm in. So I'll just start a line and then bring it all the way across. So you notice it said uh, 0.197. Um, yeah, so I used the measure tool over here and I clicked my line. And over here at the bottom right, there's length 0.197. So that means I'm going to do 0.98 divided by 0.197 when I get this image back again. So in order to make the dimensions the same. So um, I'm going to, I just control Z everything, honestly. Um, so I just removed everything I had so that when I in insert the image again, I know my scale. So I click insert picture and then insert from my computer, get my Novid picture, and then I brought it here. And so when we we're going to scale this XY image to um, 0.98 divided by 0.197. Wait, is it the other way around? Why is this so, uh, wait, this is right. This is right. It should be bigger. Okay, so I press OK. And now if we check, so I create sketch and then I click on my plane. And then I go to the line tool and I check again. This is pretty much 0.98, right? So. Now I'm going to be working kind of alongside this picture. And one thing to mention is that, um, like Maggie said, we want to simplify this image because if we want to get exact, it takes a lot of time and it's kind of, um, it's really tedious. But it, as long as we get the general idea, and plus when we print it, it's not even a big object, so it won't even matter that much. So we just want to simplify it into um, simple shapes that are easy to sketch. So I hope everyone's around this point. Oh, sorry. Can you explain how to do the scaling again? Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, I just control Z what I did. So if you have, um, if you want to insert a picture that you want to work on top of, you click um, under the main solid tool. There's an insert 
canvas and then I'm going to insert a picture from my computer and this is where I downloaded it. Um, I put the image in Discord if you would like to download it. Um, so I put it on this XY plane, which is the plane I prefer working on. And then we figured out that the ratio from the original image to um, the dimension that'll fit this um, program is 0.98 divided by 0.197. So you can do math, like basic math within these parameters. So this is scale x, y. It'll scale both x and y direction, basically. So, and then you press OK, and then you should have your picture on top. Uh, is, it, is that good? Is everyone here so far? Okay, I hope everyone's good so far. <laughs> I'm not really checking chats, chat that often, sorry about that. So, wait, well, wait um, a minute. Okay. Uh, 0.98 and 197? Oh uh, yeah, 0. 0.98 divided by 0. 0.197. Oh. Thank you. All right, no problem. All right, so now we're going to create a sketch on the same plane that we put our image. So now I started my sketch on this plane. And we're basically going to trace it because um, if you think about it, it's, this shape is kind of, um, it's more like a, think of it like a, rectangular extrusion. It's just like, it's just a normal extrusion, extrusion out of the page from the basic sketch, right? So what we're going to do is basically trace over this 2D image and then um, we'll extrude it out and we should get an object like this. Except for this, um, like the end nub kind of part. Um, I'll show you guys a cool way to add that in. Um, that'll be more useful when you work with other kind of projects. So. Um, we'll start with, so right now I'm just seeing this general thing. Um, I feel like these parts would be easy to do. So I'm going to start with the big stuff, like Maggie said, right? So um, it doesn't have to be exact. So as long as the, the general object is kind of in place, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to start from around here um, along this edge, and I want to cover this distance. And if you're snapping a lot, um, you can check... Let's see. Yeah, so I turned off my snap to grid. Um, there are more, um, if, you, if you, oh, by the way, I, I prefer scrolling in for zooming in and scrolling out for zooming out. And if that's bothering you um, or any other things like snapping and stuff like that, there's um, under the top right, under your, um, I guess, icon, you click it and there's preferences. And then here it'll load up a bunch of stuff that are a bit more specific. And yeah, for me, I, re I reverse my zoom direction if that's more comfortable for you. So I have this enabled. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, so let's draw the line. So I got my line tool and I'm on my sketch. And I'm going to basically start from this end and then go to about here. Because from here, I notice it's starting to be a circle. So I'm thinking of making a small circle here and then a little bit bigger circle right here. And then I'll draw like kind of just a regular, um, like a part of a square kind of thing here. So uh, I'm just going to zoom in a bit, honestly. And then, because again, it's not going to be perfect. This image is also pretty blurry, as you can see. But yeah, so I drew my line and that covered that area. And from here, um, at, this, um, at this midpoint, I have my circle, right? So, um, just to make things easier, um, there's there's always better ways to do things, honestly, more efficient ways to do things, but this is the way I'll, I'll, I, that just comes to mind first. So I just want to measure the height of this and have a midpoint to start my circle. So personally, I would just find it easier to just draw a line and I can delete this line later. And from here, I can grab the midpoint. So this, this little triangle icon, so I click my circle tool and I follow this line and then it'll start snapping to the midpoint when you get that little triangle. So I click and then I expand it and it's about 0.9, right? It's close enough. So um, I'll type in 0.9 and I press enter and it generates a circle here, right? And next, um, the second outer circle will start from the same center, but extend all the way to the um, end line. So 
I'll just click because it snaps for me. And we covered that area, right? So I'm going to delete this line because I don't need it anymore. So now we're left with this. And it's pretty good. So now um, I also want to get the, this end chunk off, right? So you can just use like the line tool and then um, I'll just start from the center to get this snap in right in the middle. And then um, there's a way to just go from the end from, let's say from here to here and do it. And then um, there's a special tool called chamfer, I believe. Um, let's see. But there's a, there's a special tool that you can cut it off like that. But honestly, it's not a big deal. So I'll just draw a line here, draw a line here. It doesn't have to be perfect, unless you want it perfect. In that case, you can get the measurements. But since we're running a bit low on time, I kind of want to get through this quickly. And we'll have a, we'll, we might run into an error extruding. And we have this circle here as well. So what we're going to do is grab our trim tool, so our scissors. And it's under modify. And we're going to trim off this part of the circle because it's over overlapping with this circle. So we don't want this at all. So we'll trim it. And if you said, if it says constraints or dimension removed during it, that's perfectly fine. It just means when you're drawing something, something was in reference to that part of the circle, but we're, we're doing, it's okay. Nothing drastic like changed. So, um, yeah, if you want it to be exact, you could get the same dimension and, um, be precise with getting it equal on both sides, but yeah, we are running low on time, unfortunately. So I am just going to guesstimate, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to spend the time to do it better, then feel free to do so, of course. Um, I'm just going to get a rough estimate here. So now we did that part, and now we're going to move on to the second. We see a second big semicircle. So um, let's see, let me. The way I would like to do this is I would just draw a line starting from the same center point. I'll just draw up to about where I'm feeling good. And then I'll grab this center point. Okay, I'm lagging a little bit. So I grab this center point. Then I draw my circle. Okay, so we notice a problem is that this isn't very circular actually. So, it's okay. Um, we just keep our line and we're going to use something called an arc. So we'll use the arc tool. So under the create tab, if you click it, it'll give you more options. So um, even for the basic shapes you have, if you want to draw it in different ways, they have different ways to draw it. But in our case, we're using the arc. So we'll use the three point arc tool. So what this lets you do is, okay, am I, am I lagging? Um, yeah, so create, oh man, okay, create arc. Three point arc. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure why it's not snapping actually. Let's see. Oh, it's snap. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so um, if you have snap on, it'll make it easier to snap on the things you already have. Um, so with the three point arc, what you do is you grab your two endpoints and then you can arc it however much you want. So I'll do that again. So I'll go to create arc, three point arc, and then I'll snap to this end, snap to this end. And then I arc it how much I want. So I'll arc it to here. And now I made this part, right? So now I also don't need this line anymore. So I'll just delete it. And also this part is, is messy because we, this is, um, we just want it to be the same uh, plane here. So I'm going to trim it off. So we'll grab our scissors under here and then we'll trim it off here. Okay. And next, how much time do we have? Okay. And we're getting there. So here, it's just pretty much a line. So I'm just going to draw a straight line up to here. And then from here, it's also kind of weird. So honestly, this shape is really weird where you can draw it with lots of arcs. There's always different ways to do it, but the way I see it is just a lot of arcs. So I'm just going to use my arc tool. Um, and I think I want to make it two arcs because this um, it's like a steeper arc than this arc. So I'll just stop it like around, around here is good enough for me. And then I'll arc it here and then I'll make another arc. So we're using a lot of arcs just for this one because kind of a weird design, honestly. So about here, 
And if, if your feeling is snapping too much, then you can turn off snap. And it'll snap to less things. It won't snap to nothing, but it'll snap to less things. So got that part. And again, this part's also kind of arcy, so let's just use some more arcs. And close enough. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, especially if you're trying to rush. But later on, if you wanted to make a perfect version of it, feel free to do so. So I see an arc that's kind of like over here. Okay, and then there's a line here. So coming straight down. Yeah, sorry if I'm going a little too fast. I just want to, I don't want to keep you guys too late as well. So um, we see another arc that's here. And so the thing about this arc I'm using is that it's symmetrical, right? So that's why I'm dividing it into multiple arc segments. So this looks about symmetrical where I can grab an arc here. And then I guess we'll have one more arc. Are there better ways to do this? Uh, for sure. But this is just a quick way to do it, I guess, if you don't want to be completely perfect. So now I draw my line. And when it turns blue, that means you have a solid shape. Um, and now if you'll notice, there's like a lot of these like little corners that can be that can be annoying. With something this small, it won't be very obvious, but if it was bigger, it would definitely be noticeable. So what we can do is use the fillet tool. So under modify next to our scissors, we click fillet. And we get to basically choose a corner, and then we get to um, round off the edge. So um, of course you can't you can't go much that that much, especially with these ones that are kind of small. But you can go like just a reasonable amount just to round it off a little bit, and then press enter, and then I made a fillet there. So now as you can notice it's a bit it's a bit smoother over here during this transition. Um, and yeah, you can go around and fix these ones too as well. But overall, I think it looks okay and there's more things to do. So I'm just going to finish my sketch. So from here, um, are there any questions so far? I'm kind of going fast. I will quickly clarify. So when JJ is saying that it turns blue, he's referring to the shading of the shape. It tells you that it's a completely closed shape. However, the blue lines means that they're not fully constrained. So don't get that mixed up between the two uses of the word blue. Yep. All right. So yeah, so now we have our um, enclosed 2D sketch. So now we want to make it 3D. So if you can notice by the dimension it gave here, it's extruded by 0.24 inches. So that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll just go extrude right here. We'll click it. And then we'll click our um, shape that we want to extrude. And now we are going to extrude it by 0.24 inches. 0.24. And it's loading. OK. So this is our general shape that we got. Looks pretty close, right? So except maybe here it's a little bit awkward. But yes, it's pretty much like this. But now we have to finish off this nub part. So. The way I want to show you guys this is by having a separate component and then attaching it. Because um, when you work with other things that have um, multiple parts that are stuck together during manufacturing and stuff like that, it might be useful to know that skill as well. Um, especially if there's like a small component that's actually attached multiple times, it might be useful to make it two separate bodies and then attaching them. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, I want to just start another separate body, basically. Um, I'll just use the same file. And I created a sketch. Oh, let me go back. So I created a sketch along the XY plane again. Um, and it doesn't really matter which plane with you use. I'm just comfortable with this plane. So the thing about the nub is that <laughs> this, this picture is really bad of the dimensions. It doesn't really give you much information. But we can estimate it that um, we can estimate that maybe the diameter is like 0.197 inches. That's close enough, right? So we'll make a cylinder with 0.197, and then we'll add a little bit of like, we'll add like a cap at the top, I guess. So um, yeah, I'll just draw off to the side anywhere. And we want it to be 0.197. 
and this will be our base and also the length of it will be um, so we see it's like around here like 0.17 so I have my circle and I'll extrude it like 0.17 so now I have a cylinder right so I drew a circle and extruded it of a cylinder and now we want to add this cat part on top I guess right so there's a lot of different ways to do it um, let's see the way how should I do it there's a lot of different ways to do it I guess I'll show you guys the revolve tool so um, if you think about it if you have a um, if you have like if, if I were to make a um, if I were to draw let's see <laughs> Oh, I have to choose a plane. If I were to draw something like, um, so if I drew something like this and I revolved it 360, then it, it would be it would be able to make this semicircle kind of looking thing, right? So we can do something like that, right? So in order to do that, I want to start the drawing from this from the center, but it's a little bit tricky to do it. So I'll show you guys a cool trick. So um, in order to have, so of course we we don't have a, a plane that goes through the center point, but we do. We can create one um, by doing. Um, Let's see. Surface. No, it's not surface. Yeah. Okay. So, so under solid tool, um, I'm going to click this construct, and here it can it, it gives you options of where do you want to put planes, right? So the way that comes to mind when I want to make a revolution like that in the circle, of course, there's pro always probably better ways to do it, but the one that comes to mind is plane tangent to face that point. So. Um, Okay, it's not happy with that actually. Uh, did I choose the wrong one? Oh, tangent plane. Maybe? There we go. Okay, so yeah, so you click start. So under construct, you go and click tangent plane, and this will let you put it along the tangent of your outer cylinder, like so. So now we have another plane. So a plane is just another way, another place, like another plane that we can work on, and I'll use it in the definition, but it gives another place we can put a sketch. So I have this plane here, but of course I want the plane to be offset, right? So is this going to load? Okay, so now I get to offset this plane. So from this plane, from the, from the tangent plane, I can make another plane that is offset by a distance. And in this case, um, so let's see, the diameter was, so if you click the measure tool, of course you can find your diameter again. 0 0.099 is the radius. So I'm going to offset this plane. When I make this plane, so I, I make offset plane and I click the tangent plane. So now I offset it by negative 0 0.099, right? And now it'll make a plane through the center. So this lets me work in the center of the circle and in the perpendicular direction. So I can create my sketch. And now I'm working. So even though it looks like I'm working on the edge of it, I'm actually, oh, wait, I clicked the wrong one. Did I click the wrong one? Oh, no, no, no. So you see the origin starts from the center. So I am in the right one. Okay. It's just this plane is, I can delete this plane actually. Um, so yeah, if you want to see specific things you've been working on, you can go under your folder and you can make them visible or not. Um, this plane that was tangent, I'll just make it invisible. So now I don't see it. Okay, and I can. This is the plane that I'm currently working on. So I'll just make those not inv make them invisible. Okay, and then now we're going to make our um, edge of it. So we need some dimensions though. So it's just going to extend um, 
Okay, so this is awkward because I'm in the wrong point. But um, I'm just going to get a quick measurement by going in this plane again. So from here to here is that, from here to here. So I'll extend it out like 0.7 basically. And then um, I'll go halfway. So this is the measurement I needed about when my circle started. So now I'm good. I'll just go back to the plane I was working on. I can make it visible. Yep, so I want to go back to this plane. So sketch, pick the plane I wanted to work on. Um, and by the way, so if you, um, you might have figured it out by now, but if you uh, click your scroll, your scroll button, you can like move around kind of thing. Um, okay, so I'm working in this plane again. So I actually might not have even needed it, maybe, because I can just, um, yeah, I, I didn't even need it because I could have just, so I just estimate here, honestly, there's so many better ways to do it by actually getting the dimensions starting from here and going outwards. But again, we're not looking for perfection here. So I'm just going to estimate, honestly. Um, And then, so I made my circle, and then I made, I also need a line here. So that's how I can have this separate shape. It's highlighting it in the black outline. So this is the shape that I'm going to revolve to make it 360. So I'm going to trim off all the excess, and I'm left with just what I want, which is right here. So now if I look at it, so now you notice if I revolve it, so I click the revolve tool right here, and there's solid, revolve, and then I click the um, 2D sketch, and then I click the axis. I get to select my axis, which is here. So right now it says cut, but I don't want to cut. I want to join. So now I made like a nub kind of thing at the top. So now I click OK. All right, almost there, almost there, almost there. So now we have our two separate components, but the thing is, I want to attach this, the center of this, to the center here. So in order to do this, we're going to start using the assembly functions within Fusion 360. Um, wait, before I do so, I'll check the BlueJeans chat really quickly. I know I'm really rushing, but... Um, are there any questions so far? No, I don't think so. Most of them have okay. been answered. All right, cool. Um, yeah, sorry. Hopefully you're able to follow up along somewhat and get a good understanding, a general understanding, because um, I'm kind of rushing through this one, but okay, we're almost done. So now we're going to assemble our components. So um, right now, these are just, if you go on your, um, like under your browser, it says it has all the different things we've been working on, like sketches, but what these two co uh, things are, are basically bodies, they're called bodies. So this is body one, our first thing that we made, and this is body two. So bodies are made when we make an extrusion and make a 2D thing 3D. But we want to make these components. So in order to do so, because components can be assembled together. So I click my body, and then I click New Component, and I'll press OK. So now you see it moved out of the Bodies folder and into just a separate component kind of thing. So that's what we want, and we'll do that with our second body, which is here. So we click our body, click New Component, and then press OK. And then now we have two separate components. So this is exactly what we want. And we just have to attach them together. So we click this joint tool. And it'll basically let us um, attach two separate components to each other. So I'm going to send, um, get the center of this, this side. This space is going to attach to here. Right? So I'll get the center of it. And then I want to join it to the center of this square. So I'll click. Boom, look at that. And we press OK. But uh, just cool things to note is that there's cool, if you want to be a cool person, you can add some motion animation to it. Of course, your object, when you print it, won't move like this. But in case you're curious about weird things it could do, ooh, look at that. <laughs> but anyway, so you just press OK. The motion doesn't really matter. Um, so yep, now they're attached. So. That is your Novid finger. So, yeah, honestly, that's that's pretty much it. 
Um, it was kind of kind of went kind of fast, but let's see if there's any questions. Was anyone able to follow along at least somewhat? Most part, oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Are, are there any questions as well? Oh yeah, I can show it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, so by the way, um, there's like at the bottom left, there's a timeline of all the things you did throughout the, all the major things you did throughout the project. So like, for instance, this is just my blank slate. And then over here, I guess I was working on my second body. So if you drag across the timeline, you can see different things. So um, I'll, I'll revert back to before I attached this. So I'll go back before I made my body's components. So right now at this point in, 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 in time on my timeline, these are separate objects. So I'll just go through everything again and so what I'm going to do is right now, these are bodies. They've just been extruded to these sketches, but I want to make them components so that they can be attached. So I click my body that I want to make a component and then new component. So under the symbol, I just click this, um, this icon and then I press okay. And it moved from body to component. So now it's a component and I'll do the same with this one. So I'll click my body and then I'll click new component and then I'll press okay. So now there are separate components. Now what we do is we're going to use this join tool. So I click it and what this lets me do is attach two components based on a certain constraint. In this case, I'm going to make the center of this the, um, in the center of this my constraint. So I'll constrain the center of this guy to the center of this guy. Um, let me turn off the motion. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just does animation when it's um, solid, but yeah, so I kind of like moved around my view cube at the top um, in order to get the right uh, face. And you can always click home if you want to revert back because if you're lost and press OK. And now they're attached again. What exactly is the difference between a body and component? So um, body is just kind of a, there's probably like more terms and more specifics between the definition of a body and component. But at least for my practical use, for the general practical use, I guess, is just that um, a body just appears when a 2D object becomes a 3D object, like through extrusion or like revolution, basically. But then um, a component is what's needed in order to make assembly. So this is considered an assembly, like because it's we, we constrained two components together. So in order to make an assembly, you need components. So that's just a, there's just an extra step that's required in order to make them attached. And um, I guess, um, oh yeah, cool. And yeah, and if, if you wanted to like customize your Novid finger, um, I mentioned the cut tool before, so I'll just go through it really quickly. If Let's say I wanted to add my name on this, right? So I'll click create sketch, and of course I'll work on the top point. And from here, I will just, um, I'll make my name really quickly. So right now I'm sketching on top of this large surface, and I'll just, Make a basic name really quickly. Um, so of course my name is two letters, so it should be pretty easy in theory. That's not connected. Okay, close enough. And then, um, oh, it's lagging. Okay, so I made that, but I have another J. So. Uh, I can also show you the uh, rectangular pattern that I mentioned before. So in this case, I want to, oh, what the heck. So I grab all my lines. Um, sorry, I'll go through it again. So create rectangular pattern. Since my name is two letters, JJ, uh, I can repeat it. So rectangular pattern, and then you'll select your, you'll select your lines. So I select all of them. I select, <laughs> I select all of them. Okay, I selected all of them. And then I select the direction, but um, actually I think it already, I can just drag this. And, yeah, I can just drag this and it should be okay. Except I only want, I don't want three, I want two. So I just move it here and I'll press 
Okay, and now I have my name, right? So finish sketch, extrude my two surfaces or my two sketches, and I'll just cut them inward by a little bit. And now I have a customized Novid finger. So yeah, there's just like these are like the basics, and honestly, um, if there are more functions that you think you would need, you can kind of just look them up as you go. Like if you're making like a screw or something like that, or like a nut, then you can find out what the other things will do. Um, yeah, but this is basically the basics of that. And I hope this has been helpful. Are there still any questions or any new questions? Not at the moment. So thank you everyone for coming. I know that we had to kind of rush this workshop and we still went a little bit over time. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Next week we will be teaching you how to take a 3D model you've made and export it to get ready for 3D printing. And obviously a lot of you don't have 3D printers. So not only will we show you kind of how to get something set up for a 3D printer if you end up having one, we will also show you how you can submit prints to have the Invention Studio print them for you. And they can do that either for free or if you want high quality prints, you can pay a crap ton of money. But we'll show you how to do the free stuff as well. Yeah, and also um, if you ever have like any questions or, um, or you're making a model and you have any questions or you just want to see some, or show off something you made, feel free to like put it in like Discord or Slack and we'll be sure to see it. And, um, and then when other people can see it as well, that'd be really pretty cool. And um, yeah, and also um, if you do have more questions at the next meeting, then feel free to do so because of course the 3D printing is also directly related, related to what you actually make in CAD. So we can also have a little bit more um, detail in CAD if, that's, if you have any questions or just wanted to know a little bit more as well. So yeah, just, just let us know and keep in touch. And um, would you have anything else said? Um, JJ, if you want to turn off your screen share so they can see the slides quickly. Uh, yeah. Okay, so next Friday we'll be using the Cura software to convert, or not convert, but get our models ready for printing. So we'll also send this link out in the email, but we're also dropping it in the chat. You can install Cura, and that's the software that we'll use to um, get our 3D model ready for printing. And yeah, with that, thank you everyone for coming.